here's that pollinator plot that I keep referring to mostly because it's right next to my house but also because it's absolutely spectacular and I look at it it's tremendous success and I'm looking through it and it's just a terrible amount of attention towards that's a male but a terrible amount of attention towards the sunflowers I have the phacelia in here, which don't, it doesn't seem to be giving off as much now that it's colder. But I still have honeybees, working sunflowers, and I still have queen bumblebees working these sunflowers. Here's one here. And I don't know the different types of species and such. Carrie tells me that she's counting six different species within here of bumblebees. And it's really fascinating. Now these girls are just ready to head into hibernation for winter. And they're coming and they're gorging on this pollen that's available. They're fattening themselves up. Same with these honeybees. Look at the pollen on those honeybees. We've gone through a fairly heavy frost so you can tell that these flowers are dying. There's still just drags of pollen on here I guess. Here's a, a native bee and you can see the, the little birdies are also feasting on them. Look at the size of that sunflower head. But at any rate I had a like a follower send me a link to a study to do with uh, sunflower pollen and its medicinal medicinal effect it has on bumblebees and honeybees and they're specifically referring to gut infection there's a gut infection I forget the name of it you'll read it in the link I provide below but there's a gut infection that plagues bumblebees which apparently the pollen of the sunflower does a terrific job of counteracting it and same with honeybees. Honeybees, they find when the honeybee gorges on sunflower pollen that it helps counteract the nosema spore infection within their guts uh, very noticeably. I forget the, you know, the, the actual data behind the, the, uh, the study and the claims and the findings, but enough of a benefit that is it's quite significant and they associate it specifically to sunflower pollen. I didn't really know about that. My purpose of putting sunflowers in here is because they're very attractive to all types of bees. They produce a lot of nectar and they produce a lot of pollen. And I know that sunflower pollen is lacking in some of the essentials which need to be balanced off with other pollens, but it's still pollen that can be used to provide those nutrients needed to build to build out that winter nest. Now if these bees and these bumblebees are targeting these flowers to gather that sunflower pollen to gain the medicinal effect off it, then that is just a huge win for having these little set aside plots for all the native pollinators and honeybees within the area. And their findings are quite significant. It's not the, you know just casual, it's not just like margin of error, it is quite significant. They're talking about reduction of these gut pathogens within the bumblebee like 40 times. And I forget what it was for the honeybee in regards to nosema, but it is quite a significant advantage for all types of pollinators, or the bumblebees and the honeybee anyway, to feast on sunflower pollen throughout the year and into the fall. And I'm wondering, I can't help but wonder. Okay, this is just an observation that I'm making. The last probably two, the last three years, our farm has been growing more sunflowers into the rotation. Uh, just because of crop rotation or whatever reason, our neighbors are doing the same. So I pretty much have my hives. I have access to sunflowers pretty much right across the board. And now I'm putting these little pollinator plots in here and providing more of that late season sunflower flow to my hives and these native pollinators all around. 
Now this is just an observation I'm making, but I haven't treated with fumagillin for a quite a number of years now. And that just happens to coincide with the increase of uh, sunflowers that have been growing around this area. My nosema counts have plummeted to a point where I'm thinking like, where did the nosema go? I used to have counts of nosema spore counts within my hives, you know, 25, 50. I had one analysis come back at 75 million spore counts. I've documented this within my videos here. And I've been doing sequential sampling just to try to make sense of any of it and all of it as I was kind of playing around with some little on-farm trials of fumagillin. And the se sequential sam sampling showed severe infections some years as my hives leave the winter shed. I quit using fumagillin because I figured fumagillin was providing a detrimental effect to my hives. And that's just something I found. I know there are a lot of beekeepers that swear to be able to use that treatment. And if it's working for them, then by all means. But I'm just passing on my experience and that's that the treatment has provided so many inconsistencies amongst uh, the testing throughout my apiary and to the point where when I quit using it, I got more consistency in my sampling across the board and the nosema counts decreased. But whether or not those nosema counts decreased because of not using that treatment or just coincidentally, maybe it has something more to do with the forage that they've been actively feasting on. And just reading that study, I just couldn't help but think of this on the back of my mind. Like, holy shit, maybe this is what I'm seeing. Instead of that correlation between the treatment I'm putting in my colony, maybe it's a correlation of that natural forage that the bees are actively collecting and bringing in as we have more sunflowers in the area. And maybe by having more sunflowers in the area, maybe it's promoting like a, a better microbial environment within the gut of those bees to be able to counteract some of those nosema infections. And maybe because I'm spreading these little pollinator plots right across my farm, and maybe because my bees have access to more sunflower pollen more often throughout the year into the fall, maybe it's just providing the environment within the guts of the bees to be able to reduce those spore counts. It's things I'm thinking about and it's things I'm observing and I can't prove any of that other than these bumblebees are thick on these sunflowers all through the fall. My honeybees are thick on these sunflowers all through the fall. They've been after these other flowers for nectar and all this kind of stuff but predominantly they focus on the sunflowers. There is also a mention within the study that perhaps these bumblebees and honeybees to that effect are self-medicating. They, they also mention that bumblebees and honeybees to that effect will target the medicinal effect of the sunflower pollen when they are influencing heavy infection of the particular gut disease. And they specifically mention that. Just an interesting little observation on a little project that's going on on the farm here. And maybe there's something behind that. And if that's the case, then we as beekeepers need to promote more of this. You know, get more sunflowers growing across the countryside for one thing, but get more set aside land and get, uh, you know, more of these flowers growing just to help as we identify the problems within the countryside, within nature of declining pollinator populations. Maybe as beekeepers, maybe as society, we need to be focusing on providing the, you know, the solutions to the problem instead of just continually identifying the problem. So the solution to a declining pollinator problem is flowers. Maybe in this case, specifically sunflowers, but I'm talking diversity. I'm talking all types of flowers. More flowers. More flowers, which will bring more food, which will make a healthier pollinator population.